Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics on Light and Waves. In this video we're going to look at the uh, concept of refraction and relate it to refractive index. Now we see refraction all the time. For example, if you look at this pen here in the glass of water, we see that it's magnified. And it also, the light always seems to, to bend, or the pen looks as if it, it bends. Now remember, when we see an object, it's due to light coming from an object and hitting our eyes. So really what's happening is the pen doesn't bend, it's the light as it passes through a variety of media. We see the same sort of thing with respect to a mirage due to the change in um, density of the air. Very close to the asphalt to the road, the air is um, a lot hotter, which means that the particles are further apart, which means it's less dense, which means that light will change its speed as it moves from one media to the next or from one area of density to another. And this change in the density distorts the um, direction that the light travels and our brain tries to interpret that. Sometimes it can be quite detrimental and it really does play some, um, some weird things. For example, seeing an oasis in the middle of a desert when it's not really there. Um, obviously that is down to uh, the brain looking at that shimmering that you often see on the road or on, on, on some sand and basically thinking, oh, it's water. So a mirage is basically your brain interpreting this refraction that happens in light. We also see lights in um, refraction in light as a natural phenomenon with respect to rainbows. This is due to the white light from the sun being split up and uh, the density of the raindrops changing the angle at which the um, various constituents of uh, white light, the, the Roy G. Biv, the red, orange, yellow, um, green, blue, indigo and violet, all changing at different speeds and as a, as a result it separates them out and we see it as, a, as an image which we call our rainbow. Sometimes we get a double image where we get a double refraction which is occurring and you can see that in this picture here. We also use this um, angle of, or this idea of refraction and refractive index um, in our communication networks with respect to fibre optic cabling. Um, we probably see it with respect to something nice, whether um, like a Christmas tree or um, you know if we've got fiber optic cable um, lights, that that's that's pretty good. But it's a it's major um, uh, use is basically in um, communication and sending huge amounts of data very very quickly through glass fibers in the form of light, and then reintroducing it as an electrical signal at the end. So. This idea of refraction is around us all the time. It's all down to the idea that different materials have different densities. Okay, so as we move from one medium to the next, we see that the degree with which the speed changes is directly related to that density. Now, light has been um, calculated at traveling in a vacuum, so that this is the fastest speed, at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. So, that's basically the uh, speed of light, which is given the symbol C. If you think about Einstein's theory of relativity, E equals mc squared, the C there is the speed of light. Okay, so we basically are working on the idea that um, light will travel at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in its fastest medium, which is the uh, vacuum. Now, we'll also say the same for air, although it's not entirely true because air has density. So as a result, from space to air, that, that value is going to have to change, but it's, it's quite small. So as a result, we're not going to uh, worry too much about it with respect to um, our calculations at this level. Now, if we shine um, a, a beam of light at a, a glass block going from air, so the air passes through, th I'm sorry, the, the light trap passes through the air and then goes into a glass block, um, we would, according to the um, statement we've got there, we would expect to see a change in the speed. Now, because it's going perpendicular straight at the um, beam, we do actually see that nothing happens. Nothing happens to the beam of light. However, it has been reflect refracted because as it moves through that object, the density changes. If the density changes, the result is the speed changes. But because it's not at an angle, the result is we don't see that change in speed. But as soon as you put an object at an angle, the result is we will um, see it begin to bend. So we get this bending 
occurring due to this change in density. So you can see in that diagram that we've got down there, the light beam is coming in from the left hand side, but it's coming in at an angle. And as a result, it's changing its direction as it moves through the glass block. And then when it re-emerges, it goes back to its normal speed. And you will see that that re-emergence of that beam is parallel with the um, beam coming in, the incident beam coming in at the beginning. Okay, so how do we draw this in our, in our diagrams? So let's have a look at um, how we can set it up. So here's our glass block, and here's our incident ray. It passes through and it diverts. Then it comes out and we notice that it's parallel. Here's my ray box. I'm going to label up my various areas. Notice I've got my normals put in place, um, which are perpendicular to the boundary surface between the air and the glass. And my angle I is my incident beam. You can see there in orange. And my refracted ray, or my refracted angle, is shown in green as a little r. So we're always looking at the angle from the ray to the normal in each case, just like we've done in all our other um, diagrams that we've worked through. Now notice that um, depending on where we're talking about, we're dealing with the top of the glass block, the instant angle is in the air. But if we're looking at the bottom of the glass block, the um, angle of incidence is in the, in, in the glass block. Now that's important when we go on to look at um, multiple levels of media. So always split it up into, let's just look between this layer and this layer, and then let's look at the next layer and the next layer. Split it up into two sections. Don't look at a whole um, aspect there. So what is going on? Well, we know that the air is less dense than the glass block, so it's traveling a lot faster. As soon as it enters the glass block, the density increases. Now, basically, as the density increases, the speed slows down. Now, if the speed is slowing down, the refracted ray is going to move towards the normal. And you'll notice that the angle of refraction, that little green R, is, is um, the angle is a lot less to the normal than the incident ray. But when we go from the glass block into a less dense medium, you notice that the angle then opens up again, it gets wider. So that's a good point worth noting, that as we go from less dense to more dense, the angle of refraction is going to get smaller. As we move from more dense to less dense, the angle of refraction is going to get greater. And uh, again, we can use that when we're at, we're at um, scenarios, what's likely to happen. You can start checking that your calculations are correct. Now, the degree with which the medium changes the speed um, is related, as we said, to the density. And figures have been given to looking at how does the degree, the change in density, relate to the change in speed. And we give a ratio um, value to this, which is called the refractive index. Now, this ratio has no units. It's a difference between the speed, and it can be calculated. So, obviously, the question is, how do we calculate it? So we know that the, the, the fastest speed of um, light is in a vacuum at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we can use this formula, this ratio, um, to basically calculate the refractive index of our medium. So the formula is N, which is the refractive index of that medium, equals the speed of light in the air, VA, divided by the speed of light in the medium, VM. Now, in a calculation, you may be given um, a variety of different speeds, or you might be given a, a speed for that specific medium. You know that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 in the air. So as a result, you can calculate your refractive index. And I've put together some videos for you to, to watch as to how we can work that through. Now, here is an example of a table which shows the variance in um, different speeds and how that relates to the refractive index. So you can see for air, um, if I was to put air into that equation, it would be the speed of light in air is 3 times 10 to the 8. And if I was going into another form of air, 3 times 10 to the 8 again, I'd get a value of 1 when I divide the 2 away. Water is a lot slower or moves a lot slower than air. 
so it's going at 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it has a refractive index of 1.3. Diamond is one of the, the densest materials that we can pass light through. It has a refractive index of 2.42. Now this means that it basically slows down light that much. So we can look at a variety of things where we might say that um, an object changes the speed of light by a certain percentage. Well, if you know what light comes in at and you know the percentage change, you can then calculate the speed of light. And from calculating that speed of light in that media, you can then calculate the refractive index. OK, so what I suggest you do is now go into the and um, watch some of the exemplary videos that I've done as, as to how to calculate um, refractive index. And um, yeah, then try some some of your own uh, questions, either from the textbooks that you use in class or um, other resources. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful, and uh, I look forward to you joining me again. Thank you for watching.